Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Got another stat bomb for you. The first one was about Mace in his 1 in 14 tournament. Kinda on the negative side, but it was a very rare occurrence, so it was interesting to talk about and research. This one's gonna be a lot more positive. Will Wakataka Kage make it to Ozeki? If you've been watching him for the last several tournaments, and especially in the last one, of course, where he won the U Show, had 12 wins his first run at Sekiwake, you would definitely be forgiven for saying, oh yeah, of course he's going to make Ozeki. He looks great, he passes the eye test, he looks real strong, and there's really no reason to think that he can't keep beating, if not straight up dominating, the competition. But the eye test can be fallible. You see what you want to see sometimes. So what does history tell us? What do the statistics of Sumo tell us is likely, given what he's done in the recent past? To start, let's look at Wakataka Kage's recent past, his last year, year and a half of competition. Even before the 12 win you show, he was incredibly consistent. He spent 8 consecutive Bashos somewhere between Maegashira 3 and Komasubi. That's a very small range of ranks to spend over a year of tournaments. So I had the question, how many guys have actually done this? And the answer is 9. Looking at this list, you've got Uji Nishiki, Tokitenku, Misu Gisado, Hokuto Fuji, Endo, Takamiyama, Tochi no Nada, Daesho, and Wakataka Kage. As you can see, these are not listed in time order, but in order of the number of Bashos consecutively that they spent from Maegashira 3 to Komasubi. Several of them did it for more than 8. Fujinishiki did it 11 times, Togetenku 10, Misugisado, Hokuto Fuji, and Endo 9 each. But what I want to draw your attention to is the number of Kachikoshis each of them had. 5 was the max. Fujinishiki, 11 tournaments, only 5 Kachikoshis. Usigosa Misugisado, 9, 5 Kachikoshis. Tokitenku, 10 tournaments, only 4 Kachikoshis. These guys at the bottom, Tochi no Nada, Daesho, Wakataka Kage, all had 5 in only 8 Bashos. That's pretty good. That puts them a step above the guys higher than them on this list. But Wakataka Kage is even better, because if you'll recall... In January of 2021, he had to sit out due to COVID rules. I believe he actually had an infection. He wasn't just a close contact. That means he wasn't in that tournament, but he maintained his, Maegashira, his high Maegashira rank. And so he only had seven tournaments instead of eight in this time span. He only went Maki Koshi twice in these eight tournaments. He had as many Kachikoshis as anyone on this list, despite not competing as many times as any of the others. Nobody on this list has been particularly successful. It's not like this is a bunch of Ozeki level wrestlers um, at any point in their careers. But the fact that Wakataka Kage had this better showing over that stretch of time puts him above them and means we can expect a little bit more out of him or should be able to expect a little bit more out of him than these guys were able to provide. Okay, but that's not a lot to go on, right? Sure, he did better than everyone else in that relatively select group, but if they weren't Ozaki, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get there. So let's look at another accomplishment. Three straight Kachikoshis ranked specifically from Maegashira 1 to Maegashira 3. Well, only three wrestlers have done that. Mito Izumi, Daesho, Wakataka Kage. Well, Wakataka Kage had two 9 and 6 records in there, whether or whereas the other two had 8 and 7, 8 and 7, 8 and 7. So, Wakataka Kage had the best uh, run of those three, but that's not much of a sample, so we should expand this a bit. We'll include Komasubi wrestlers, so who had three straight Kachikoshis from Magashira 3 to Komasubi. Well, so that's 72 times it's happened. That's too much. Let's add in another variable. Who did that and then, in the Basho immediately after that streak, managed 11 or more wins? That brings us down to 10 wrestlers, and that's a good sample for us to look at. So here's the list. We've got 10 wrestlers, 9 outside of Wakataka Kage. And if you don't know your history, that's fine. But what you can see here is that of those 9 wrestlers, 7 of them made Ozeki. That's pretty good. That is excellent company to be in. 
Furthermore, it's worth noting that Tochinowaka was definitely Ozeki level and was on an Ozeki run, but got injured the very next tournament and never quite reached the same height. Furthermore, the only other person on this list not to hit Ozeki, Waka no Sato, was Sekiwake for a good five years. Just couldn't quite hit the numbers he needed to, but was basically, arguably, an Ozeki level wrestler as well. So this is extremely good company to be in. Now, how long is it going to take him to make Ozeki? That's another question. For this particular set of statistics, we can see that these guys, when they did make Ozeki, they did it relatively soon. They didn't take too long. Um, only a few of them did it very, very quickly. So if you're thinking, oh, he'll make it after May or July at the latest, you know, Kirishima did it after one, Dejima did it after two, Takakesha did it after two more. But, you know, Kayo, Musashimaru, Asashio, Kirinji, they all took a little bit longer. None of them took longer than two years, though. So if he is going to make Ozeki going by this, you would expect that maybe he won't do it instantly, but he definitely should get there, barring some kind of injury or other bad luck. All right, so now we've seen, based on his recent history, he stacks up better than a group of non-Ozeki wrestlers, and he is also within a group of guys who were definitely Ozeki wrestlers. So now let's look at his 12-win tournament and some of the circumstances surrounding it and see how he stacks up historically against the guys who have managed that feat because it hasn't happened given the length of sumo history all that often so how many times has somebody made 12 win to sekiwake and not been promoted to ozeki 35 the number of wrestlers to actually do this is 30 because it happened multiple times for some guys musoyama did it three times tochiozuma kotomitsuki mitakiyumi did it twice each now, Musayama, Tochizuma, and Kotomitsuki, the last time they made 12 wins at Sekiwake, then they were Sekiwake in another tournament, but they were Ozeki soon after. Mitake Yumi actually did his 12s in 2018 and 2019, and as you probably know if you're watching this, didn't make Ozeki until 2022. He's the outlier, but we'll get into some of those details in a moment. The number of wrestlers who made Ozeki after the next Basho, so they were Sekiwake got 12 wins, or Sekiwake again, and then made Ozeki, 21 out of 30, 70% of them. That's pretty good. The number who got it after the, the Basho after that, so they were 12 wins Sekiwake, Sekiwake again, Sekiwake again, then Ozeki, three more. So now 80% of these guys made it within two tournaments. So if you're going on Wakataka Kage's current time frame, that would be by the end of the July Basho. The number who made Ozeki at some point is 27, 90% at some point in their careers. Haguro Yama, who was an Nenen Yama at the time, Hasegawa and Tamawashi are the only ones who never did it. Tamawashi is the only one in the last 50 years. The other two, uh, Haguro Yama fought in the 50s. Like, he did it immediately after the switch over to the six Basho per year system, and then Hasegawa fought in the 60s. Tamawashi is the only one even slightly recent. Wrestlers who have more than two Bashos from the first 12 plus Sekiwaki run to Ozeki promotion, five. Musayama, 34. Kota Mitsuki, 34. Mitakiyumi, 21. So these guys obviously took a lot longer than anybody on the previous list because there are no guarantees here. But what we are still looking at is that, you know, Tochi Azuma took nine, Kayo took eight. We're still looking at 24 out of 30 wrestlers who went 12 went to Sekiwake and then and weren't immediately promoted still made it to Ozeki within two years. So the numbers are actually very much the same. 7 out of 9 before, 77%, and 24 out of 30 here, 80%. With a larger sample, that looks even better for him. It is worth noting that Miyabiyama, he made Ozeki requirements as we think of them. He actually had 34 wins over three tournaments. He had uh, 
his 12 win at Sekiwake for purposes of this was a 14 win you show. And then he got another 10 after that and 10 before that. So he was at 34, but they didn't promote him because he had already been promoted to Ozeki. Uh, not the most popular decision. Uh, some of the committee that made that decision didn't vote for him. I think it was only seven out of 10 did. So he was not promoted because they didn't trust him to maintain a status as a good Ozeki wrestler. Um, but he definitely hit the numbers, and if Wakataka Kage were to do the same thing, he would absolutely be promoted. I also want to share this list. I know some people don't really like using decades-old statistics for things like this, or for anything, so let's just look at the guys since 2000 who have had this achievement. Until Tamawashi, every single wrestler who has managed a 12-win Sekiwake run and not been immediately promoted did eventually make Ozeki. Furthermore, for Hakuho, Haramufuji, Kiseno Sato, and Terano Fuji ended up making Yokozuna. Kakuryu is the only Yokozuna that was in this time frame who didn't achieve this particular, you know, set of uh, achievements. Now, technically, Ta Takiyasu could still make Yokozuna. I mean, at this point, probably not, but it's possible. But Takiyumi is viewed as a potential Yokozuna candidate if he just picks it up a little bit. And technically, Tamawashi isn't retired, but, you know, he's not gonna do it. So this number could even go up. Yeah, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but so what? It's fun. We can pretty much say that Wakatake Kage, based on this, really should make Ozeki. Tamawashi's 13-win Sekiwake tournament was really, really out of place given his overall record. It was very much in the vein of those guys who just go on a magical run. Um, Toku, Toku Shoryu, I can't remember his name. Um, the guy who was Magashira 17 and had a 14-win Yu show. It looked like that he just happened to be Sekiwake at the time. That's how he made it on this list. Everyone else, Wakatake Kage looks more like them. He looks more in their vein of dominance, more in their vein of ability, and we should look to them as examples of what he's probably going to do. And finally, I want to look at one other achievement of his. It's pretty specific. He had four straight Kachikoshis, with the last one being 12 wins in his very first Basho at Sekiwake. He's the only person that's ever done that. But again, it is very, very specific. So, of course, there's not going to be a precedent for this. Now, let's expand that. If we go down to anyone who has three Kachikoshis below Sekiwake, then 12 at Sekiwake, only five other guys have done that. But they're not a great sample either because their achievements are all over the place. We have, again, Haguro Yama, never made Ozeki, Kirishima, immediately promoted, Kaio, you know, like we said before, he had eight Bashos before he made Ozeki, Muso Yama, he did that on his last 12 plus Sekiwake runs, and then he made Ozeki very quickly. And then Miyabiyama is the one who made Ozeki numbers but wasn't promoted. So this is a good group, obviously, but it's a small sample, and we like bigger samples. So let's expand this further. If we now include anybody who had four consecutive Kachikoshis, with the last one being 12 plus wins at Sekiwake, so this could be four straight Sekiwake tournaments, this could be going from, you know, Maegashira 8 all the way up to Sekiwake, anywhere. They could be anywhere on the Banzuke at this point. This happened 62 times, not including Wakatake Kage. 41 of them made Ozeki immediately, so they're not relevant to this. The ones who stayed at Sekiwake, that happened 21 times, and it happened to 19 wrestlers, since Tochi Azuma and Musayama did that twice. The number who made Ozeki after the very next Basho was 12 out of the 21 times that it happened. Those who made Ozeki after the Basho after that, so again, with Wakataka Kage, we're talking about May and then July, that was three more, 15 total, out of it happening 21 times. What were the other ones? We've got Haguro Yama again, Hasegawa again, these are the guys who never made Ozeki, the first time Musayama and Tochi Azuma did this, so the second time they made it very quickly. 
Kaio, again, he took eight Bashos to get to Ozeki. And then Miyabiyama, who we've discussed, should have made Ozeki number-wise, but just wasn't promoted. Tamawashi isn't part of this group. Because he's not part of this group, and Wakataki Kage is, if he somehow fails to make Ozeki after pulling this off, he would be the first wrestler in over 50 years to fail in that way. So if you think he's not going to make Ozeki, you have to think he would have to fail harder than anyone at a high level in half a century. Do you think that's going to happen? Because I don't. So let's move on to our overall conclusions. Going back to the start, Wakataka Kage has the best performance of any wrestler to hold a rank from Magashir 3 to Komasubi for eight consecutive tournaments. Everyone who has ever scored at least three Kachi Koshis in a row from Magashir 3 to Komasubi with 11 plus wins in the Basho after that has either made Ozeki or been considered very much Ozeki level. 90% of wrestlers who were not promoted from Sekiwake after getting 12 wins at the rank still eventually made Ozeki, with 80% doing it no more than two Bashos after the 12 win tournament. And 90% of wrestlers who have had four consecutive Kachi Koshis, with the last being 12 wins to Sekiwake, have made Ozeki, including every single one who's done it in the last 50 years. So, by the historical record, Wakatage Kage should make Ozeki before the September Basho. I personally am putting the odds between 70 and 75%, which is actually less than the record says that it happens. The record shows this happens about 80% of the time. There is quite a bit of parity in sumo right now, so I think it's going to be a little tougher for him to get there. I think it's definitely going to be kind of difficult for him to do it in the next one because he's going to need 12 wins again. But I think he can absolutely get 10 or 11 and make it easier for himself to get it in July. So it's, I think it's very likely, but it's going to be a little tougher for him than I think it has been for people in the past. Still, 70 to 75%. Now, if he doesn't do it before the September Basho, the odds of him pulling this off do drop. But when you look at how many who didn't do it that quickly still made Ozeki, he still should be considered better than 50-50 to make the rank. So in the end, is Wakatake Kage going to make Ozeki? Put your money on it. I'm Sumo Spiffy. I will see you next time. Get ready for the Natsubasho, folks. <laughs>